This video is the second video in a series of four videos where we create a main application. So in the first video, we created a single page application using Angular. And in this video, we're now going to look at how we can use Node.js to provide a backend data service to our application. So before we begin creating our Node.js backend server, let's take a look at how the application will grow from a single page application into one with a separate front end and a back end service. At the moment, when we run ng-serve in the terminal, we're launching a node server that hosts our static single page application. When we navigate to different routes, the single page application will display different components as we define in our routing module by creating and destroying components. Data is provided centrally within the application through the diary data service However, this has limitations in that it cannot be persisted and stored. The node backend service will be responsible for managing our data, and we will later connect it to a MongoDB database for persistence in a later video. The node backend service will provide data management support, such as retrieving, updating, and logical processing of data, as well as possibly authentication in the future. Whereas the single page application will load different components from different routes, the backend service will register different paths, known as URIs, which stands for Uniform Resource Identifiers, to provide different data responses for. The backend service will provide what is known as a RESTful service. So REST stands for Representational State Transfer. The service works by registering available URI paths that can be accessed by the static web application. And in return, it responds with the required data. So our service behaves in a stateless way, which means each request is completed in isolation and does not rely or depend on the completion of any other requests. It is performed as an atomic operation. So the requests we send to our REST service will also contain a HTTP method that indicates the desired action performed on the request. So typical methods include get, put, post, and delete for reading, updating, adding, and deleting data respectfully. And as a result, we can customize our URIs to only accept specific method types. When the REST service responds to a GET request, we will provide data in a semi-structured JSON format. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and consists of a series of key value pairs that can also flow in a tree structure. So this response can then be mapped to values and read by the single page application. And for example, we have a person here with a name, age, and a height and a weight. So now that we understand how our backend service will be used, let's dive into creating our node server. It's important to remember that our backend server is completely separate to our single page Angular application. To make that distinction, I'll create a new folder at the project root called backend. I've placed it here just for convenience, but it could actually be anywhere in your machine, this folder. And then within that folder, I'll create our node service in a file called server.js. I will add a console log to the server.js file to print running. We're able to execute the node server by running node and then dot forward slash backend forward slash server.js. And then in the terminal, we can see running is being printed. Now we will look at how we can turn our node file into a server by providing a data response to an incoming request. So to begin, we will need to acquire the HTTP package and all the methods that come out of the box within Node.js. And to do this, we will create a constant and we're going to call that HTTP. And we will use the require keyword from Node to consume the HTTP modules into the constant. Now the HTTP package will provide us with methods to create our server and next, I will create the server into a new constant by calling the create server method from the HTTP modules. This method will create our server that will accept incoming requests and provide the appropriate responses. 
The createServer method accepts an optional argument function that is executed every time our server receives a request. The argument, known as a request listener, will accept two arguments a request object that holds the incoming request details, and a response object which is used for handling the response that is returned. I will use an ES6 function to capture the request and response and to handle them in a method body within curly braces. To test our server, I will use the response object and call the end method, which tells the server that the response is complete, and I will pass in the text of hello world. I will now assign the port for our host to be listened upon with server.listen3000. And we can now run our node backend. And what you will notice in the terminal is that the node service has not ended as it is currently listening on host 3000 for any incoming requests. And if we ever want to stop our node backend from running, we can just run control C in our terminal. And if we head over to the browser on localhost 3000, what we are doing is effectively sending a request from our browser to our server. And we will see the response of hello world is being sent back into the browser. So we've successfully sent and received a response of data from our node backend. So to enhance this backend service, we will need to enhance our request listener to add better middleware to it. And this middleware will allow us to handle unique requests that are made and in turn to respond with appropriate data responses. So in the next video, we will begin to expand our functionality of the backend service by using Express.js. Express.js will be used to register unique URIs to provide actual data to the user when they send requests to our server and to different paths. We will also connect our single page application to the backend server so we could begin to use and display the data in our web page. So I'll see you in the next video.